since we're all women here, I'll be very open and honest with you, right? So when I first started my business, I also was invisible, okay? I was that business that did not have structure. I was that woman because when I came to Ghana to start set up my business, yeah, I came into you know a system that you know really wasn't supportive for female entrepreneurs. Here we are again, <laughs> women about business representing. <laughs> How are you doing, Kimberly? <laughs> I'm I'm actually just now realizing that you have this amazing background. You're in the high radio studio. Yeah, yeah. We've done some. Uh, I I don't know if you've if you visited our. Yeah, you have visited our new location. We have rearranged the studio and all of that. So yeah, they definitely awesome. put some thought process into. It. Nice. I love it. I'm doing well. I'm having a good start of my Monday, actually. What about you? Yeah, the same. Same here. It just did start off a bit, you know, uh, I was dragging. And at some point, <laughs> I was like, okay, Tina, chill out. Make time for everything that you do. Hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm getting really into the, the, the flow of everything. And I think that Tuesday, tomorrow, then... I can really, um, then my brain will really understand that, hey, a new week has begun and we're doing it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Slow start, but focus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, well, we're, we're back again. And um, something I'm super delighted about is every time, uh, I don't know, people always say, <laughs> Tina, you meet like, where do you meet all these people? <laughs> and I basically explain to them, you know, I just get in touch. That's basically what you, you have that thing as well. You just pretty much you just get in touch with people. And, <laughs> um, and this, in this particular world of women about business, it's this, uh, especially for the um, getting to know African women. It's, yeah. I, I get into this, this scene of women that do the most amazing things that have me like, man, how do you do this? Yeah. And um, it's like every time and time again, this new world opens up that if, if I had been the one that would just be focused on, you know, where we're at, where we are at, The Hague, Amsterdam, I don't think that I will easily be able to connect with women of such impact, you know, that mm. we engage with every week. So, yeah. um, yeah, that brings me to a place where I am, I'm taking notes while we have all of our talks and while we uh, interact with all of our special guests that we have. And this is one that uh, I'm really, really delighted to, um, to introduce. Um, I, I can't really pinpoint like where I discovered her, but I know among the greats uh, of, <laughs> of the women <laughs> from Ghana, uh, that is how I discovered her. I mean, we yeah. had you know, so many women here on the show. So it's somewhere there where I discovered her and a story just kept popping up as I uh, engage with uh, people from my network. And uh, of course, her resume is endless. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. one thing I really love about, and that is really the, the red line in her story is that she's dedicated uh, her career and life to solving global challenges and producing yeah. innovative solutions. Um, that type of story is what I love. So it's not just about her being a boss and, you know, di director, this, this, and that, titles and titles. But yeah. it, um, it's really about handling a challenge that comes by every time in, in, mm -hmm. in business. Yeah. And um, she does this for all members of society. She is very familiar with global actions. I think that's one of the reasons why she shared the idea, let's do the Women About Business Amsterdam. Hey. <laughs> and uh, she continues to raise the African flag high and keeps finding ways to, um, to general beneficial impact alongside investment in social and environmental issues. Uh, yeah. She serves real causes um, uh, in, in words as her legacy paves the way for the next generation of young leaders in Africa um, and beyond. She is the founder and manager of partner of Anand Capital Partners, uh, a sector agnostic specialized boutique investment company that was created to increase investment attractiveness to the African continent 
and encourage engagement in sustainable projects uh, impacting a numerous life. And that, you know, within the entrepreneurs you deal with, within the programs I've been upon, that seems to always be something that, you know, entrepreneurs should always touch on. And yeah. um, that's one of the reasons why I thought that she really is an unmissable personality uh, in Women About Business. Philanthropist, her core mission is to build uh, women's development opportunities across the African continent. And uh, why all of that is and, and everything in between, we're going to talk to her uh, just right now. So let's welcome uh, Roberta Anan uh, to this uh, fab conversation. Um, Hello, Roberta, how are you? Hi, ladies, I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I, it's I'm good. so great to have you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, and I hope you're safe. Um, I know the uh, COVID-19 um, situation isn't the best in Europe, but hope you guys are keeping safe out there. Yeah, we are. It's been it's been quite intense. I think you know almost a year in lockdown uh, with all the measurements that we have. Uh, yeah. It's been quite interesting, but I'm just also quite fortunate as I've seen some people die of the virus that we are all in good health. So, yeah. 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 Something Again, different. for me as well, it's, it's really uh, a place of where I'm grateful to be in this, uh, this place. Of course, it's seriously, almost seriously locked down. Uh, was it one and a half month ago where I just returned from Ghana and it's different, a bit more flexible. <laughs> So <laughs> being able to to still, you know, be back home in that sense uh, has added to my um, uh, inner peace, I must say. So it's yeah. a good balance. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> and and also thank you for being as flexible um, because I know that, um, uh, you know, from your office, it was like, oh, is this video? And you just basically, <laughs> said, you know what, let me just. Uh, make sure I sit for, at an angle where I get enough sunlight. So that's that's some boss moves. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, <laughs> uh, you. I'm really excited you. about this. You know, talking to you two today. Yeah, good to hear. Good to hear. First and foremost, uh, I'm just curious. Uh, where are you in this place in your life? Of course, COVID, New Year, all of it. How is it in terms of business for you? Like what, what, what does your environment at this point look like? You know, um, COVID, of course, we're all living in the new norm. Um, yeah. We're all not prepared for what COVID brought, whether it's the economic impact it's had on, you know, communities and economies or, um, you know, personal life, you know, even like the work-life balance, you know, with kids. We were all not prepared for COVID. Um, and in fact, I must say that it's been quite challenging for me. I'm a single mother with an almost 10 year old. Um, so my son will be 10 next month. Um, I run my business, businesses. <laughs> um, yeah. And I also take care of my mom who is 72 and retired. So during, wow. you know, during this pandemic, kind of started, we all realized that we needed to manage because of course a lot of older older people, you know, tend to have are more susceptible to the virus and its yeah. effects. Um, so that was quite challenging for me because I had to manage keeping my son at home and homeschooling him. Um, and then also managing my mom and ensuring that you know there was separation. And that was quite challenging because they're very close. Yeah. Yeah. So like the whole emotional kind of impact of that. And then I remember at a point in time, my son was very confused. He kept asking mommy, you know, are we going to be like this forever? Are we ever going back to school? Yeah. What is happening? Yeah. In fact, I don't even want to go back to school because if I can't be with my friends, then what's the point, <laughs> right? So <laughs> that was and Unfortunately for me, my son is in a bilingual school. So a lot of, like half of his, they do the curriculum in French and in English. Yeah. So the French curriculum was quite challenging <laughs> because, yeah, of course, I don't speak French. So I needed to get some help for him to go through that coursework. Um, but I think that those were like the downsides. And of course, we've lost a lot of friends. I've lost a very dear friend and business partner of mine. Um, in January, due to COVID, I got it. He was taking care of me, and then he went traveled outside 
the city with his wife and caught the day, came back oh, wow. and passed on after oh. the hospital. Wow. Um, it was quite difficult for, 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 for us, you know, on the very, it's been very, really challenging. But I'm glad that at least, um, despite all the good things, the, 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 the negative things that have happened, I feel COVID has also allowed me to, I was in the middle of raising a fund. Um, yeah. And, you know, of course, a lot of our, you know, prospects pulled out because yeah. they they wanted to kind of pull back to their resources and focus on their current portfolio. I didn't want to put money into yeah. it. So that really impacted us. But we found ways to survive because we're so resilient. You know, being here on the continent as entrepreneurs, we're very resilient. Like I keep telling people that when you're used to creating things from nothing, you know, yeah. <laughs> when things like a pandemic happen, I, you know, as painful as it is and as drastic as its effects are, we always find ways to survive. And we survived. In fact, I've seen a lot of growth within my own company in certain areas, um, you know, because we were focused, we cut down on travel expenses, we, you know, right. invested the money back into new, like, team and workforce to ensure that our goals are moving ahead. And luckily, I have a cornerstone investor for my fund. So in uh, on April 2nd, we actually announcing our first um, investment, um, wow. which was all done during that, the pandemic. <laughs> that is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. But, and I hear you um, when, when you mentioned, you know, um, doing business on the continent. I always say this to everyone. If you can do business in Africa, you can succeed anywhere. Uh, because, you know, at the end of the day, you are, you're usually building up your company to be resilient in the first place yeah. and to be adaptive. Um, and it's also part of the way that you're going to look at the future and how you handle things. So it's really, you know, good to hear and to see you kind of um, as an ex another example of how that looks like. Um, and of course, it's not easy. We're not trying to say that it's not, but uh, that it is surely possible with the right focus and determination. I think, uh, like you said, being able to leverage the partnerships that you do have and being really focused on what you're looking, what is the core of the business that you're trying to achieve is so important. And, you know, then doing a first investment in, in, uh, <laughs> in during COVID is yeah. something impressive that we should be touching on probably a bit later. Yeah, thank you. absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Congrats. Thank Congrats. Thank you. And I must add that we've been very active. So we have invested in 10 female-led enterprises during COVID. Um, and we we did a, something called the COVID-19 stimulus package, mm -hmm. which supports 10 female-led businesses in Ghana. We okay. had overwhelming 4,000 applications, and we invested in 10 in February. Amazing. Um, we partnered with, and it, I guess it's partnership and collaboration. You know, we worked with Guba and Women's and Empowerment yeah. Group to do that COVID-19 yeah. stimulus package. So we realized, you know, even though we have our own struggles, I'm not saying that it's you know, rosy out here. You know, the entrepreneur right. journey is challenging. And we have our own issues. But we realized that a lot of women would even suffer more because don't, I don't want to go into it. I'll just allow you to ask me the questions. Otherwise, I can get very passionate and cry it away. Sure. Please get into it. <laughs> <laughs> but feel but free, a lot of feel free. Because you see, the issue here is that, in, especially in Africa, in, in developing country, economies, is that women tend to be in the informal sector. So even though the MasterCard Index has stated that there are 46% women and female entrepre entrepreneurs in Ghana, yeah. Over 80% of these businesses are informal. Yeah. So during COVID-19, when the government started all the stimulus packages and stimulus initiatives, yeah. these are run through financial institutions. But if yeah. you have women who are in the informal sector, they cannot access those funds. It yeah. immediately removes women from it. Okay. Yeah. That is why we set ours up, because we realized that the informal sector needed more infrastructure and formalization so what we saw within our application is that even some of the women did not have you know like their companies incorporated and all of that 
So we yes. started creating a, as, um, um, a system to really provide that infrastructure to these women. And then we supported 10 of you know, the 4,000. So yeah. there, the opportunity is there. It just has to be handled in a very different and structured way, which is what we, 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 we have done. And we're hoping to actually do a second cohort, you know, to, you know, we're still, we're going to phase the economic impacts of the pandemic for at least another two years. Um, two years? We haven't, wow. have, I don't think we've even reached, uh, you know, the peak of the yeah. real impacts of the pandemic. We haven't reached mm. there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So looking at this, um, because this one thing I love is that you make something possible for the entrepreneurs that are somewhat invisible, you know, in terms of having the formalities in place. Um, what are some of the, you know, the requirements of somebody being able to uh, become a potential um, business that receives these funds? And how do you find them since there isn't a, a specific formality to their, uh, to the presence of these companies? Since we're all women here, I'll be very open and honest with you, right? So when I first started my business, I also was invisible, okay? I was that business that did not have structure. I was that woman because when I came to Ghana to start set up my business, yeah, I came into, you know, a system that, you know, really wasn't supportive for female entrepreneurs. And I don't even, that's another podcast altogether, you know, to go about right. some, some of the challenges that women face here. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I really struggled to, to even get my first deal going, to get my business going, to get my business registered, to get my business. No, you can actually register your business within two weeks, right? But registering and opening a bank account does not mean you have a business, right? Like, right. there are so many hurdles that I faced because I wasn't, you know, willing to you know, change into a certain status quo or like I, I, I want it to be different. I want it to be unique. You know, yeah. I want to like do things based on merit and not based on whom I, you know, whom I knew, like a relationship yeah. based, because I, I was educated in the States and it's all merit based, you know? And so you work hard, you put in the work, you get the results. You know, if you put in more hours, you get the money paycheck at the end of the month. That is yeah. the way I, I was brought up in my adult years to handle like the entrepreneurship but coming yeah. here it's, it's very different you know it's based on who you know who you know in power you know it's it's a very very different system so I wanted to create something that really went against that status quo and I said women could still do it on their own but then how are you going to preach when you're not making it on your own you know you're not going to be able to encourage anybody if you're not successful so I aim to be successful. And, you know, the way that I did that was to ensure that I had partners and in places that believed in me that could yeah. really give me the strength in areas where I was weak. And that is how I did it. And that's why I am very, very much focused on women because I know the challenges they face. I have faced it. I've walked that path, mm-hmm. you know. And so, you know, it's, it's you can have to, their male counterpart getting a huge contract and being paid a lot of money. But as a woman, yeah. they look at you like, wait, how are you going to spend all this money? Are you sure, you know, they, you're young, you know, and there's also a, a, another thing with, with age, ageism yeah. and, and sexism. These are the two things that are really, really fighting us on this continent. And you know, you're a young woman, you know, why should I pay you this amount of money at, you know, on this contract? You know, I could very well just give that to my daughter or my wife or my girlfriend, you know, you know, or, right. you know, I can would. we have a conversation? You know, that's that yeah. these are the things that are placed. It's a very patriarchal system here. And right. women are in a position to help address some of these challenges. It's like we never talk about it. It's so endemic mm-hmm. in our culture uh, and who we are as a people. And mm-hmm. we we just never talk about them, you know, and it's like the older generation think this is a normal way of doing things. And we have been exposed. You're in the diaspora. I've gone to school in the States. You know, a lot of young entrepreneurs like myself have traveled and they are, they are exposed and they understand different systems. 
So they start questioning, you know, what's happening here. And then you have the older generation saying, shut up. That's how things are done in Ghana. If you want to survive in Ghana, this is how you have to do it. So my thing was to really just demystify that and really try and encourage a generation of young women who are driven, who are passionate, who go after their goals and their dreams, who have the infrastructure in place, who get access to finance because they deserve it, you know, and because they work hard for it. So, so that is my aim. And that is what I'm trying to do within Anand Capital Partners is to really what I call alternative investment asset classes and women tend to be an alternative investment asset class is of key importance to me. And it's because it's so personal <laughs> and it's so connected to what I have been through um, that I don't want other women to face that. And I want it to be easy for other women. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. I, uh, even hearing, hearing your story, I can just imagine what it takes, like the blood, sweat and tears that you had to put in to have your business to go off um, and then comparing it to probably the environment where you're from, where probably registering your company is done within an hour, at least here in the Netherlands, if we make the comparison, um, I always say, you know, um, or I've noticed that especially if you're returning, you have to let go of every idea that you have of whatever your West, Western environment was, but Hey, there is quite a difference. Um, can you share a bit about the frustration that came into it? Did you think of giving up? Um, did you consider giving up? Did you have to readjust your business idea or your business name? What could, could you share a bit about that? Okay. I mean, in terms of giving up every, you know, we all go through this. We yeah. give up, you know, sweat, tears, you know, we, we go through it every day. Yeah. But just starting from the genesis of it all. So my business, um, really my, I'll say my entrepreneurship journey started while I was ending my um, contract at the United Nations. Um, and I was launched into a sphere, which is creatives and fashion with a huge magazine. My first contract was to do this Vogue Italia special issue on Africa, which really resonated with me because I wanted to change the lens in which people viewed Africa. And the editor in chief had approached me about doing that. So I really did spent a bit of you know work on, on, on that project and it was very successful. Mm-hmm. It was very successful, but I realized that even though Africans were featured in that, we still lagged, you know, setting things that would make us successful. You know, it's like we're always being talked about in all these big magazines, you know, you know, LVMH Price, you have Africans there, we have Africans, you know, top time 100 list, you have Africans there, but you have Africans there and it's like one African is the representation of all of us, which is not the case. Right. Um, and secondly, it's like exposure in media does not mean success because your bank account at the end of the day is what shows, right? That's the bottom line. Like, show me the money, <laughs> right? <Yeah>. So, <laughs> but it's not about your social media following. It's not about all of that. It's about the, the bottom line is what are you delivering and how are you impacting other people's lives? So True. I saw all of these things and I was really exposed on a global scale with a lot of media exposure and I did not have the infrastructure to back it so when you don't have the infrastructure to back it it's like people know you to a certain extent you be people will know about you and what you're doing but then when real business comes in you won't be able to manage it because you don't have the infrastructure and that was what was happening to me and so after a couple of years of trying and getting some really I got a huge Equibank contract with Miss Universe organization um, and doing a few cool things, I realized, okay, th- they paid me this amount of money, but and when I look in the bank accounts, um, where did the money go? <laughs> because Wasn't you don't have that. Bad? Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> wait, like, you know, we need to like put things, systems in place so that yeah. we can have a real business, <laughs> right? So I did that and I, the reason, where I learned to put that structure is I joined for two years a multifamily office in London. Yeah. I had, you know, quite a substantial amount of assets and under management and they really trained me on the job, you know, on how right. to honor people, how to deal with clients, administration, you know, legal, like all of that. And I really learned. So by the time I was done there after two years to start 
my own company in Mauritius, I was really, really like structured. And I had also been, you know, in, uh, placed on a certain pedestal by them that allowed right. for clients to actually trust me. And I had a huge network, network through that and other people that I'd met in the UK. That's right. when things started really happening for me as a business. Because before mm -hmm. then, it was all just play. You know, and meeting mm. attention here and speaking engagement here, but it was not structured business. So where so was this? Where was that bit of uh, experience taken? In on? the beginning, it was really when I was leaving the U.S. I was between the U.S. and Ghana at that time. So I was in. This was right. between, I'd say 2013 and 2015. It was very, very like shaky. You know, although you know we're getting, and I see this with a lot of entrepreneurs. You know, you have yeah. people talking about you people inviting you to speak but it doesn't translate to business it doesn't translate to you being able to have defined boundaries yeah. and infrastructure to you know pay your bills on time all of those things are important as a business so i wasn't structured and mm -hmm. so and that lack of structure became so at that point of view you lose trust and confidence like from some of the people that you've dealt with because you made those mistakes and that thing follows you because even now with structure, I remember when I was doing my um, the fund and I had some issues in the beginning with, you know, in an initial partners, we had to do a complete reshuffle of partners. Yeah. And I had challenges. People were like still going to refer to stuff that happened in 2013. And wow. it almost discouraged me from progressing on the fund. But then I sat back and then I was like, no, 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 no. That person lack of infrastructure. This person has infrastructure. Mm -hmm. We're different pe uh, people now. I've grown and I've really, really like matured in my business. So I closed my ears to all of that and then I focused. Right. And that yeah. really, really propelled me to get to the finish line because I almost gave up. And when you talk about giving up, that was one of those moments for me in 2018 when I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. I can't mm -hmm. deal with people. I can't deal with the naysaying i can't deal with the criticism it's too much that just people trying to discourage you and say you can never do it you're not good enough you're yeah i decided not and that is one thing that kills entrepreneurs and they're driving people yeah yeah so i really just close my eyes and hear it. whatever they say let them say it let me go on and do what i need to because the moment you Right now, we are announcing our first. Uh, when we did the the women's fund, we were very successful at it. We invested in ten. We're now doing our first investment in the in the creative arts fund that I I was raising. Yeah. And people are starting to see success. Oh wow! So it was going to work. Oh, so it was really going to happen. Oh wow! Yeah. And even those that we had even supported who decided not to even acknowledge it are now acknowledging. So that is yeah. It's not an easy journey, but you have to be determined to, and you have to know who you are as a person. I'm not saying I'm perfect. We all have our shortcomings, but at least understand that you have to be give, you know, give excellence in everything that you do. You need to be yeah. above par because first of all, we have this whole thing, diversity, racial women's thing against us. And then in Africa it's ageism as well. Yeah. So you have all of these things that are, trying to keep you in a certain, um, you know, level. So you need to be able to like give, make sure that everything is in order so that nobody can pin anything against you in the future. And that is what I have done. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, hearing you speak about this, um, it's, it's, it's quite, uh, on, one, on the one hand, it, it's very encouraging to see that um, through all of this, you you went you went through it, but it's also um, also kind of it brings frustration with me to me also a little bit because it's something that you hear so much, um, and it's also something that you see on every level, and it's also something that I'm a bit tired to speak about uh, to be quite frank because um, you know understanding all of these kind of hurdles that we have to jump over um, and then knowing that we're still delivering such excellent work, like you said, you know, being above par, bringing your best every time. 
um, and then those that are being regarded as the standard or the norm, uh, doing half of what you're doing in terms of delivery and experience. Uh, it's just quite frustrating. And you've already talked about it a little bit about how you handle this and, you know, speaking, you know, encouraging yourself, surrounding you with people, yourself with people that do believe in you and having that determination. What do you think is your primary driver when all else fails that keeps you going in that, in those situations? Hmm. I mean, it's going to sound so cliche, but I, I, I really, really have a very strong spiritual, um, I'll say, background, you know, in terms of prayer. I'm a prayer warrior. I pray. Um, I don't joke with, you know, emotional intelligence, intuition, and those type of things. Right. So um, when things happen to me, and I went through this in 2018, I was telling towards the end of Taylor, end of 2018, 2019, when... I was really, really struggling with the fund. And it's like the people that you are trying to even raise this fund for don't even believe you will do it. You'll be successful. And yeah. a lot of naysaying, a lot of negativity, a lot of bad, so many things because of mm -hmm. setting mistakes that were not even my fault, but were blamed on me. Yeah. And then turning me back to the earlier mistakes when I, I made as an entrepreneur, which everyone makes. Everyone, makes. of course, highlights it. Yeah. Because people did not believe that I was meant to do a certain thing and mm. that I was putting myself into it. Yeah. But you see, they're not God. Like this, I always look at it. I'm like, God gave me that vision and he gave me yeah. and it might sound so cliche and whatever, but it's the reality. It's something that was given to me as an idea. It is my idea, it is my thought process, it is my structure. Of course, I'm going to drive it to the very end. Whether you believe it's going to work or not, I will do it. Yeah, and yeah. I had that faith and I had that confidence that was given to me, you know, to be able to push forward because it was really difficult. I'm not going to joke. It was really difficult. Even like your own circle of friends will just <laughs> disappear, you know. <laughs> Wow. It was really difficult. I had about a handful of people who were still communicating with me. Hmm. Wow. It was really difficult. So, I mean, this is something that could easily, just, somebody would just quit and probably just check into a mental institution because you're, yeah. putting, you're putting all your money, all your resources, you know, you, you have people that are depending on you for the things to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what an entrepreneurship journey is. It's not easy. It's not social media. It's not, you know, like dressing in all of those fancy clothes and taking pictures. That is not what the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial journey is. It's really these struggles. And I think what makes a good leader is the ability to just look at all of that and still keep going. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I went through a process where I really felt flat on the floor, but I didn't stay there. I didn't. I pick my face from the floor. Mm. <laughs> I made up on it and just kept going. I'm like, yeah. and it was God that was giving me that confidence to just keep pushing and just block, you know. And then I also blocked my ear. I blocked a lot of people off, and I said, no, 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 no. Let me just focus on block, block it. Yeah. If it's not positive, block it. I love block that. It. Yeah. I'm not. You should not listen to advice, but there's some. Yeah that is constructive right so you know that you can take that and you know really but there's a way in which you handle it that it's like oh okay yeah there she goes again yeah 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 so okay. i blocked all of those things and then i just decided to push forward and focus and focus and focus and then surrounded myself with a group of people who really knew me and truly generally believed in me right right and that keeps me going it was really weird, a spiritual thing. I prayed, and it was like, just, just, just go because this is just a challenge against the destination. It's not even you, the person. It's yeah. against the destination you get. Wow. Very important. Very important to have that as a, as a vision. Uh, one one of the things that I really liked about, and I think this especially counts for the let's say the fresh entrepreneurs is understanding that the talks, the appearances, and 
those type of things are mostly not, you know, the business models <laughs> that, you know, keep your uh, business going or at least at its core. And what I love about what you said is it helps me to be reminded of, and also hopefully it will be something that other people understand is that um, you're going to have to build on what is going to, you know, get drive that business model that you have. And if you think that, you know, the following in terms of social media, uh, for instance, or the uh, virtual following, as we are to say, is not really it. Um, as a matter of fact, it is tough. Uh, we had one uh, special guest uh, on this platform who said, listen, it is tough, this yeah, really entrepreneurship. And um, I love how you share that. It really highlights it for me. One thing that I would really like to know, because back to um, your journey, uh, you expressed that, hey, you started uh, informal, um, now connecting to all of these women that you've been able to create opportunities for through your fund. How did you find these women? Were they in your network as you have had gone through it yourself? I know you have some partners that you work with. Uh, how were you able to find them, convince them of the opportunities that are at hand and also introduce a formality to what they do? Yeah, so it's very interesting and uh, important question. Yeah. I think for for me, yes, within my network, because I realized a lot of my friends were do, making the same mistakes about the lack of infrastructure around their businesses. So I I always support in, in any way that I can to ensure that my friends also have structure. But this yeah. particular uh, COVID-19 stimulus package we did, we did a, um, a country ride advertisement so we did like a call for a call for participation and it was spread on all channels in the media in ghana because we knew that women really needed the money and yeah they were heavily impacted by the pandemic so we had over four thousand applications just through the we had like a month long four thousand we opened the call in may and we ended it in august oh, okay so, and we spent about three months just going through 4,000 applications. And what we realized going through the application, because we also brought in um, a tech partner to make sure that all the 4,000 applicants were on this tech platform so that the women can even gain initial infrastructure. Because with a tech platform, they're able to manage their books and, you know, see like the um, oh. track sales and your customers and there's a bit of data collection on their end hmm. we live in a data-driven world and we are lacking in this market because of the informal nature of our businesses in accessing data and making rep, um, you know like um, um, I'll say relevant decisions about our business because we don't have data yeah. so we yeah. ensure that women had were on this OSE platform and when we were putting them on the OSA platform, we realized, ah, this person has not even registered their business. Uh, you know, they, they don't have, a, um, you yeah. know, like, like business plan. There, there's no cash flow projection. Like, there is no, like, uh, how do you, because when you're going to a bank to borrow, you need to have all of these things yeah. written up to be able to go and, you know, apply for, they had nothing. Yeah. So that, saw that there's actually another opportunity that has presented in itself by giving these women that infrastructure, they lack. Helping them register their businesses, you know, helping them get legal advice, financial like advisory, you know, on how to put their audited financial, get their tax clearance, all of these things yeah. are, are, are relevant. So that is the second phase of what we are looking to do with the 4,000 applicants because we could not yeah. give money to all 4,000. You know, we could only support 10 women. And these were the best part of the whole lot, you know. But I'll mm. say that out of all the 4,700 businesses had structure. Can you imagine? Wow. Oh, Seven, wow. Of, Man, that's what, 25%? Something on top of my head with yeah. my math. <laughs> wow. Right. That is incredible. And so... But how was that experience for you? I'm just trying to find out because as you pro probably had your hands on personally reviewing these these businesses, what are some of the things that you learned that you didn't know was out there? Yeah, so I mean, of course, the first thing is I didn't know that 
you know, if you had, so basically what it tells me is that out of all the female entrepreneurs that we have, just be extrapolating from our data alone, shows that about 20 to 25% of these women have infrastructure, are right. formal. Yeah. yeah. So it confirmed data that has been thrown about by government. So yeah. it, it really confirmed it in our exercise. And I was very, very like amazed as to how the passion and the impetus is there, but like there's nothing that is supporting mm. or that is successful. So I can so I also like kind of put myself in their situation based on my own experience, how frustrating it must be for them. And why we have so many socioeconomic challenges here, you know, like if people are frustrated and you cannot get money this way, of course, they're going to look at dubious ways to get the money. Yeah. Also explain why people are going into those types of, uh, I would say, like going to, you know, those types of avenues to be able to come up with funding and to survive. So it's just yeah. like everybody yeah. can survive. Yeah. But, yeah. You're crazy creative. Yeah. Yeah, you're creative. If you're hungry, you need to, you know, you need yeah, to. Yeah. You know, people are going through all sorts of things just to survive. And then I realized if I was giving an opportunity to formalize the sector, that's a huge, and this is WIG, right? So WIG is the Women's Empowerment Investment Group, and the CEO, Adeline, Ikuku, Ado, Kofu, and I are very, very passionate about women, and I know that she's you know, and also with Guba then Tamwa thing, we're very passionate yeah. about finding ways to formalize these women because that's a huge opportunity. Just imagine the market women, they're making a lot of money, but yeah, most tractors. Yeah. So yeah. it's showed me that there's another opportunity, you know, to even make money and to support by just targeting the informal sector of women a lot and yeah. bringing in infrastructure. Mm. So did any of the uh, companies that lack the structure that you are referring to, were they, were they among the selected businesses or was that a no-no? Like, okay, you don't have any of this. Unfortunately, we could not give the money to them because you had people right. who had structure. So we had to we set up a criteria and one of those yeah. criteria was to have structure. But that doesn't mean that we're going to ignore the rest because we are looking sure. at a, a series of training and advisory for these women to bring them more formalized. And we're talking to Ecobank about that. And then we're looking at bringing in further investment to be able to help more women. So, um, and then even the, the cohort we have, we're trying to see if we can even help them and, you know, manage their businesses to see to, you know, yeah. um, them more support so we're not ending it there we you know we're very invested in it yeah um, creating another opportunity yes exactly yeah it it must be um it must be i wouldn't say hectic <laughs> but it must be a world where you get a lot of no's and you really have to like look for where can i get the yes in terms of the funding itself um, the uh, acquiring the entrepreneurs as well. It seems like you really have to have some type of, I don't know, uh, they say you have to have some type of, you have to be able to see through the, the, the nonsense, the foolery, the ones that just come to talk and express that they have this or they can make such and such possible, but not lining their actions to it. Um, with that said, how are you able to differentiate within your scene, within all of the work that you do, between the who, uh, the what, let's just say the right people to work with. Uh, how were you able to see through that? Uh, what helps you to navigate? I know you talked uh, on spirituality, you know, your prayer. Uh, what were more of the components that uh, help yeah. you to establish think, that? Yeah, I think the spirituality and all that is really more my personal and how I kind of keep yeah. a mental, solid mental balance with all the chaos that is around me. But I think for... For me, um, because I also am an investment advisor by profession and training, um, I'm very great at hearing a pitch and knowing that uh, this, is, this is nonsense. Like, it, you know, this is bullshit. Sure. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm very good at that. 
you know and I also because I've also walked the entire process I know I know I have experience you know I've been there so I, I really understand where people are going and where and then I've also sat on a lot of like these pitches and I've worked yeah. and with more established institutions on investment so I really understand if an idea is actually going to drive and make it I know quickly if it will be successful. I know if it's not going to be successful, how to structure it to make it successful. Yeah. Um, and then how to also allocate relevant partners, to make it survive. I'm very strategic in that sense. It's more like strategic, strategy consulting and all of that. So I've done that work under my company. So I, I know quickly if these things will work. Now, um, so yes, I mean, like I'm not... Um, you know, normally um, I'll say swayed by all of the social media numbers and all of that because I don't look at that as a metric in my investment criteria. It, it's not a metric. Yes, you have to have a social presence, but I'll look at that and then I'll look at your book yeah. as well to make sure that you are actually turning the numbers you need to turn before yeah. you're going to get a dollar from me. So, I mean, I've always had that... Um, and I, and I get into trouble a lot here because people are like, oh, this person's a celebrity and this person is this. I'm like, no, no, it, it doesn't mean anything for me. Gotcha. You think yeah. I know would do a business with Rihanna if Rihanna wouldn't make him a billion? He wouldn't. You know, there's a yeah. fact that she's Rihanna does not mean that, you know, that business. Rihanna also came to the table with, yes, a great following, but also yeah. business acumen yeah. add to that following and that you know um i'll say celebrity status yeah. and that's what you forget here it's like the celebrity alone is enough we're not doing endorsement deals and sponsorship we are making investments <laughs> and we need a return on investment so sure. yeah. i have to make sure that if i give you a dollar i can get two dollars back yeah sure. i can't see that then and I get into trouble a lot here, you know, for that, because they feel, oh, yeah. she's not going to invest, you know, but I always look at things um, very strategically. And I see, I guess, because I've worked in this space for almost a decade, so I can really tell if something is going to fly or not. Yeah. Regardless yeah. of social media following, I'm sorry. Sure. <laughs> well, I think it's so it's so important that you stress on this point because um, we were all kind of witnesses of what is happening now, right? Where entrepreneurship is being glamorized and actually become something that you can call yourself if only you are able to gather an, enough followers. Right. And then you can start making money because now, uh, you know, you're selling your your courses about how to become an entrepreneur when you've never even built a business. And then they become some sort of unstructured entity. Right. But it's, it's, it's been kind of the, uh, the world upside down now right, with, with social media. And I think for a lot of women, it has also become something that at least the, the the young women that I speak to, they're like, yeah, I just want to, you know, grow enough people and then I can start selling to them and then yeah. I'll have a business. It's it's become kind of this upside down reality. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking to find out from you, um, you know, um, from your from from uh, looking at your 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 core business or what you do with an uncapital partners. Um, what is what are some of the um, um, pillars that you look at like the found in the foundation of a company when yeah. you're looking at how you know how stable it could be or what promise it has for the future yeah so i'll say that we operate by several like our core value systems based on integrity we have excellence i told you uh, loyalty um you know yeah. hard work teamwork so I look at those things as well within an organization to see if we are a match and we have similar ethos. Um, right. That's number one. And if we don't, are you adaptable, like amenable to our ethos? Because right. if I'm not going to give money to um, something that is against or outside what I believe in, because values, I, yeah. my values have to match with the investing company's values so yeah. that continuity and 
I cannot do it if there isn't. And it's it's not a personal thing. It's really more about because I I look at it, I'm a very I'm an impact investor. So it's not just putting money, but how am I making an impact? Are you looking at supporting more people down the supply chain? Are you looking at creating an impact in every aspect of the yeah. supply chain? Are you looking at employing more women? Are you looking at employing yeah. young people? Are you looking at addressing some of the challenges we have in Africa? Are you environmentally yeah. friendly and sustainable? Like, are you ethical in your business practices? All of these things matter to me, and I look at all of it um, before an investment is made. That's number one. And number two, I look at the person and how you know driven they are and how passionate they are to make a difference because some entrepreneurs have a very different i'll say um, yeah so i think i i talked about the individual and their willingness to learn and grow um and then yeah. also like the core values alignment of the core values and then also you know the ability to scale and to expand um, yeah. to other markets is also something that is of importance to me because I always look at economies of scale and not limiting yourself to one kind of you know environment but also looking at sure. plugging into you know other markets these are th- three things that that I look at you know um, yeah. yeah gotcha so almost uh, almost rounding up I would really like for you to touch upon the aspect of um, what what is important for women? We know there are a lot of women entrepreneurs, especially in um, Africa as a whole. Um, women tend to be, I, I would summarize it as we women tend to do so much and be in on uh, a business idea while we don't realize that this is actually business and it should have the, the needed structure for it to be uh, a business. Uh, could you pinpoint on some of the uh, the things that you um, identify as a reoccurring, maybe a weakness, or maybe a problem, as some would call, because you are uh, one that is 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 driven to solve problems? What is like the common thing that keeps coming back with women, if it comes to uh, invest investment readiness, and also? Um, being able to train on a global scale, because that is also one thing that you are really passionate about. What are some of the things that, especially African women, Ghanaian women, entrepreneurs seem to always do and what should be the change? Yeah, I think number one is focus on getting yourself structured. It's very important. And seeking help and advice when you don't know or you don't understand certain things. Um, yeah. I see that a lot of women will just sit on their, you know, situation and not just share or get advice from other people. Um, yeah. Number three is collaborate more. Because I see that women here are always competing with each other um, sure. and not trying to collaborate. Meanwhile, we have a very small market. You know, the G- GDP yeah. of Ghana is about 60 billion. Um, yeah. If you look at the wealthy... Um, the Forbes list, the top 10, I don't think the number 10 is even, is about the same size of Ghana, right? So that no. tells you something. Right. Okay, so that tells you something. We're a very small economy compared to what is happening in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. We should not be competing with each other. We should be forging more partnerships and collaboration so that we can actually come together as a powerful unit that is then going to plug into the international market in a very powerful way. We I should not compete that, with each other. There, there is no need to compete. Like, we don't have a market. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> so, I don't understand. You know, that is the reality. I see that. And I'm like, why? Why is this? It's, it's not, let's stop tearing each other down because we don't need to tear someone's business down to be successful. No. Yeah. It really, really actually exposes our weaknesses. Um, and if you, because we all not perfect, you know, um, there may be something about me that is not up to par or you think that is an issue as a woman, but we need to work together to support each other. So, you know, embrace those weaknesses about me. I'm not saying you should accept it, but maybe there's a constructive way in which you can help me shape it up or fall back in line. Right. We should do that for each other more instead of tearing each other down. I've been a very 
um, I, I've gone through it, and I think it's so wrong to 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 do that to other women, because there aren't enough of us out there. So we need to. And when I say out there, trying to do this, trying to have a voice outside of our own community, trying to like yeah. thrust into the international scheme of things, you know, there aren't enough of us out there. So why are you trying to poke holes in what I'm trying to do? There's no need to do that instead of helping me and pushing me so that I can pull you with me. Um, you mm. know, one person steps on your shoulder, gets to the top, another person climbs, and then all the, you know, that you challenge or you pull me down because you feel that your agenda should be highlighted more than mine. So these are the sure. things that I think we should address as women and really sit down and have a strong, um, I would say, um, um, real discussion, you know, and open discussion about this. Because these are the sure. things that are really hindering us from actually plugging into the global scheme. Just the last question, looking at your journey, oh man, the impact that you uh, that you have is real, it's direct, it's it's um, it's straightforward, it's necessary. Could you share with us like maybe one or two of the major lessons that you still take with you uh, as an as an entrepreneur, as a as a, a consultant, all that you are? Um, could you share with us what those important lessons are? Always be authentic and true to yourself because um, I think authenticity is what sets us apart from other leaders. Um, always think be legacy driven um, yeah. because um, most people just want to think about today and tomorrow and make very bad decisions and not think about the future. It's really yeah. important. Honesty is the best policy. Sometimes, you know, we avoid to be honest, not that we're liars, but like, you know, we don't want to like explain the real situation. And I've, I have actually suffered heavily from it and I've learned to be blunt and just upfront with what sure. I can do and what I cannot do. And it's very important lesson I have learned. And it's a very, th it's been very tough for me to embrace. So I would love to share that with other people, you know, yeah. um, you know, I'm better than anyone, but you know, it's always better to be honest and authentic and always be legacy driven and always, you know, give more than you're expected. Mm -hmm. Because of course there's still things in society that prevent, especially black women from beating setting, um, stand, you know, like I'll say op opportunities or plugging into se several platforms. I mean, look at us celebrating the, the recent appointment of Ngozi as the sure. World Trade Organization leader, you know, you know, it's a great um, plus for us because it's just never happened. First yeah. black woman, yeah. first African, first woman, you know, having VP Kamala Harris, all of these things are first, you know, and it, it just goes to show that women can make it and they can do it. And we just need to ensure that until a number of us are in these positions, we can never stop delivering on a very, very excellent, I would say, note, because that is the only way that will set us apart from, you know, the status quo. And we need to push forward and, you know, um, have integrity. Integrity is key. Stick to your word. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. also something that, you know, we struggle. Because even in culturally, in Ghana, we are supposed to accept everything. You know, yes, yes, I can do it, I can do it. Meanwhile, you can't. So, yeah. <laughs> you need to be, you know... Just understanding that in other markets that doesn't fly, you know, and just really being um, <laughs> very straightforward with, uh, you know, and transparent with your what you can deliver and what. And I have also suffered from it, and I've learned, you know. So these are things that I think yeah. women should should focus on. I love Thank that you so much. True Thank words of so wisdom. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Where can people find you uh, online? How could they somehow sure. get in touch? Is it Instagram? So I am on. Yeah, I'm on Instagram. It's Roberta dot I'm on LinkedIn. I think it's at Roberta Annan. Yeah. Um, and then also on Twitter as Roberta Annan, and Facebook too. <laughs> I don't All use right. Facebook much, but I think I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to use Instagram, Instagram and then, Instagram. yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. 
Thank you so much, uh, Roberta, for spending uh, time with us. And uh, man, I, I, I'm going to listen to this again because this, uh, this yeah. was good. This was <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.